If you could start coming on in and joining us for a time of worship. We're going to start with open the eyes of my heart. Would you stand with us? Come join me, please, this morning. I don't know about y'all, but I think they're multiplying. Come on down, guys. There's plenty of room on the stairs. All right. So for the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about a story from the Bible. Does anybody know what story that Pastor Bruce has been talking about? Anybody? Yes, tell me. Jonah. Jonah. Yeah, absolutely. And what do we know about Jonah? He got swallowed by a whale. He got swallowed by a whale. God told him to go do something, and he said what? Nope, don't want to do that, right? 
So he got swallowed by a whale and spit out. And now this Sunday, we find Jonah at Nineveh, where God told him to go, right? But sometimes when we go and tell people things, they don't believe us. You ever had that happen? Have you ever told your brother and sister something and they didn't believe you? I see a couple hands. Yes, yes, yes. All right. But you know, sometimes when we have that happen to us, they finally realize it's true. So when you told your brother or sister, there's popsicles in the refrigerator, and they said, no, they're not. Mom would never buy popsicles. And then they looked and found the popsicles. Were they happy? Yeah. And they said, you know what? You were right. And so in Jonah chapter 3 today, Pastor Bruce is going to talk about what happens when he actually gets to Nineveh and tells the people, you need to repent. You need to quit doing what you're doing and do what I asked you to do and what God told you to do. So that does happen to us in our lives, right? And that's okay. When you're told to give a message and you know your message is right, sometimes even if people don't believe you, you need to keep telling them the message because ultimately you're right and they need to hear that message even if they don't want to hear it. So let's pray. God, we are so thankful for the way that you move in us. We are so delighted by the number of young people that are a vital part of this congregation, that are here with us, that we are allowed to impact their lives. And Father, most of all, we are so thankful for the examples that you give us over and over again in the Bible that help us learn how to live in a way that would glorify you. It's in your son's precious name we pray. Amen. Now, y'all helped me with this a week or two ago. Can we stand up, look out at these folks, and on the count of three, say, welcome to worship. Let's all stand up. On the count of three. One, two, three. Worship. All right. Great. Thank y'all. We are delighted that you are here with us this morning in worship. We are delighted that you've chosen to spend this time to glorify and celebrate our God with us. My name is John, and I'm a member of the pastoral team here. And if you're here with us for the first time this morning, we're delighted that you're here. If you've been with us time and time again, we're delighted that you're back, that you made your way through the fog to spend time here together with us this morning. And so what I'd love for you to do right now is stand up, please. And I want you to take a moment to look around where you are, to see those faces that you recognize and those faces that you don't recognize, and welcome them to worship. And then as you would, as the books are passed down your row, please let us know that you're here with us this morning. Thank you. Yeah. 
questions and concerns. Though you are God, we often second-guess your decisions. You call us as troubled when your ways don't mesh up with our ideas, especially when your ways challenge what feels comfortable to us. As we worship together this morning, may we be renewed in your gracious spirit that not only loves us, but even loves those, those who we find challenging to love. Amen. Now, for the last couple of weeks, you've heard us sing this song. Hopefully, it's a little bit more comfortable by now. Those of you that have young children or grandchildren, it's okay to admit you know this song. You've heard it on the Veggie Tales. So we'd love for you to sing it with us this morning. You see, God's a God of mercy. God's a God of love. Right now, He's going to God of second chances You'll be floored How his love your life enhances You can be restored From your darkest circumstances Our God is God of second chances Ain't it good no God Who gives second chance We feel so good when we accept the grace Our Savior grants So when you say you're sorry For all the stuff you do We know that he'll be ready With a second chance for you God of second chances You'll be floored How his love your life enhances You can be restored From your darkest circumstances Our God is a God of second chances Our God is a God If you believe God's love is true Then you should know What you should do If you believe God's love is true then you should know what you should do If you believe God's love is true Then you should know what you should do If you believe God's love is true Then you should know what you should do God gives a second chance Second chances, second chances Praise the Lord, He's the God of second chances. 
You'll be floored when you're restored from your darkest circumstances. Our God is a God of second chances. If you believe God's love is true, then you should know what you should do. If you believe God's love is true, then you should know what you should do. Second chances, second chances. Praise the Lord, He's God of second chances. You'll be floored when you're restored from your darkest circumstances. Our God is God of second chances. Our God is God of second chances. One more time. Our God is God of second chances. Jonah a second time saying, get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city going one day's walk, and he cried out, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no herd nor flock shall taste anything. They shall not feed nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hand. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. And when God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. Speak. Would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay. morning, church. Will you join me in a word of prayer? God, it is our hope 